Hello everybody, happy Friday and welcome to another edition of Brain Scratch. This week we're going to be talking about Lars Metank, and I'm sure I'm probably getting that wrong. Um, he is a German that has gone missing and I wanted to first of all send a big thank you out to the many commenters that sent in um, posts to me about doing this story. Now, this story is a bit challenging because quite honestly there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of US coverage or even coverage in English about this case. So I'm gonna do my best here, like I, I'm pretty sure his last name is pronounced differently, but I'm gonna say Lars Metank. Any of my uh, friends in Germany, I know I've got a lot of viewers out there. If you can correct that or let me know in the comments below if I'm getting that wrong. Um, and keep that in mind for this whole video. I'm really uh, a bit of a fish out of water in terms of researching this because so much of the information is only available in German. I've used a little bit of Google Translate to try to look at a few articles, so I think I have a pretty good sense of the story. But if I'm getting any of it wrong, please let me know in the comments below. We can always do a follow-up episode to clean up uh, anything like that if we need to. And I'm also curious if there might be other media sources um, that you are able to find if you are indeed in Germany or other aspects of this story. Of course, you know, um, one thing I love about Brain Scratch is the comment section because quite honestly, a lot of new developments and thoughts and theories come directly from you guys. So I'm really looking forward to your input on this one. But let's get started with Lars. So um, first, if you just do a Google search on Lars Metank, um, you'll notice here we do have one in English that's right at the top. It's a Reddit, and we're going to take a look at that one. Um, we've got a Tumblr here that also goes into it, but pretty soon you get into German pages, and it's pretty much that um, for several of the Google search uh, page results going forward. Uh, like I said, they do have this neat little translate this page feature, so I've used that in a couple of places and been able to read a little bit more about Lars. Here's a picture of him. Um, we're going to get into the details, but basically he, di he disappeared in the summer, early summer of uh, 2014. And this is his mother who is desperately, um, desperately trying to find him. So starting with the Reddit article, mystery case of Lars Metank. This is in the self.unsolvedmysteries area, and it was submitted eight months ago by, and then it says deleted, but I don't know if that's actually their username, it's in brackets, or if for some reason they took their name out of it. Um, but they have a pretty good description on it, so we're just gonna read through this real quick. There's this TV show called Ochtenzeichen XY, hope I'm saying that right, uh, while, which I watch every month, the police need help about certain cases and people at home can call in if they know something about it. Um, I'm gonna try to fix up the language here a little bit. I get the feeling that he's not a native English speaker, so you might notice some changes between what I'm saying and what's on screen. Last year in July, there was a case about a 28-year-old man from Germany, Lars Metank, who visited Bulgaria with his friends. This place in Bulgaria is very famous for young people from Germany and England, same as Mallorca and Ibiza. Matank got involved into a fight and hurt his ear, something that happens always at those places where many young people are partying. Um, I haven't been able to find great details about the fight, but it's clear that I believe they were out at some type of night spot or some type of bar, and there appeared to be a disagreement. He got into a fight, and I believe there was damage to his eardrum, which is going to be uh, important um, a little bit later. He stayed there and enjoyed the rest of his holidays with his friends. When they had to leave though, the doctor said he could not use the airplane because of his ear. Once again, I think because there might have been some damage to the drum. Basically the doctor he saw to get treated there said, um, it's too soon, you probably should not take this flight with your friends back home. So he decided to stay in Bulgaria and rented a room in a hostel while his friends left. He called at night his mother and said he fears for his life. Now from what I've been able to find, it looks like there were several phone calls to his mother and yet one of them apparently did happen kind of in the middle of the night. Um, once again, details specifically about what he told her are a little hard for me to get, but 
If you are a German speaker, uh, German speaking brain scratcher, please do me a favor and if you have some of those details, drop them in the comments below for all of us to review. But essentially he was telling her that um, he was in fear that something was going to get him or some people were supposedly after him and he called several times and then would hang up um, before the end of the call so it really started upsetting his mother quite a bit. Uh, here is footage from the airport. Matank wanted to leave again and catch his next flight. He went to the doctor's office though with all his stuff, suitcase, etc. After that he runs out from the doctor's office. I've seen in another report where he actually went to the airport and checked into some type of medical facility that was at the airport. And I believe that's true because in the footage it looks like he's actually running out of an airport. And we can take a look at that real quick. Let's see that together here. There he is. You can see he has all his bags. Seems like he's calm, like he's just walking through this airport. He's actually holding something in his hand there. I'm not sure if it was a cell phone or maybe a snack or something. But here, we see him leave with none of his items, and he is bolting. I mean, he's running. Now here, he slowed his jog down a bit. Out here in the parking lot, you can see he's still running. He cuts to the left. Apparently, he got to a fence at the airport and jumped over the fence, and I believe that there was woods on the other side of that, and then he disappeared into those woods, and that's kind of the last official viewing of him, though we will get into uh, some other details here on that. Um, Police uh, people outside saw him, how he climbed over a fence and disappeared into a nearby forest. Until today, no one knows what happened or where he is. His family is still searching for him. There is even a Facebook page. Um, here's a little more info about it. One truck driver called and claimed that Matank wanted to drive with him as a hitchhiker in Bulgaria around Easter of this year. Uh, he looked disheveled and the family and police are looking for this information now. Of course, it doesn't have to be true or even him, but he might be alive. And they have another link here to Ochtenzeichen XY. Um, I believe that translates roughly to, I think it means like mystery files or, or files X and Y, but I'm, I'm really not positive. Looking forward to your uh, feedback on that. Um, and then there's this extra statement down here. Matank was in panic before when a construction worker entered the room. He was definitely scared. There is an interview with the doctor. Um, once again, tried to watch that footage, but it's not in English, so I really can't make too much sense out of it. Um, here is a page. Lars Matank disappeared in Bulgaria holidays. This has been uh, translated with Google Translate, so the English is a little... Uh, all over the place, but it has kind of a good account here that I wanted to share with you. So they talked about they had a special edition of this, yeah, file num number XY seems to be the translation for Ochtenzeichen XY. Um, I and I believe they've covered it multiple times um, within the past year so far. He got there, I believe, on June 30th, and then uh, the event happened where his ear got damaged and on the 8th of July 2014 he wanted to fly back to Germany and here they have a little more info apparently it was a two and a half meter high fence with barbed wire that he actually ran over or uh, jumped over and got to uh, the forest um, his friends flew back without him he was staying at the Goldman Beach of Varna I'm pretty sure that's being translated I don't know what the original term is and apparently through the injury, he was having trouble also hearing, which once again points to there was potentially some damage with his eardrum. Yep, here we go. Doctor diagnosed an eardrum issue and advised him to postpone the return flight. Um, Mars went to a hospital. He was given a drug and sought outside the city center for a cheap room in a simple hotel, and that's where he got his arrangement at the hostel. Disappearance. Obviously, Lars Matank was afraid because in the middle of the night he called his mother. 
Uh, Lars said, the hotel does not accept anything. Then he broke the connection without further explanation. Uh, shortly after there was a second call, he had found a hiding place outside the hotel, he told his mother, and then again he hung up without explaining why. And in six o'clock in the morning, a third message telling her that he had made it to the airport. Um, Lars Matank sauntered aimlessly through the check-in area, called his mother one last time, and walked around 9.30 uh, to the treatment room of the airport doctor. And a half an hour later, a man in uniform apparently went into the treatment room and Lars ran frantically outside. He left his cell phone and his baggage behind, crossed the parking lot, climbed over a fence, and disappeared into a field with sunflowers. Uh, says the mother has not given up hope of being able to find her son and uh, is thinking maybe he has a psychosis and wanders confused by Bulgaria. Uh, apparently they've released 75 or they've received 75 tips since this broadcast on this TV show, but apparently um, not much has panned out from that, although you might have more current information. If you do, please comment it um, below. So as you can see, very strange case. You have to wonder, um, is he possibly having a reaction maybe to the medicine he was given? Is there something about the damage to his ear that is causing a potential issue with some form of psychosis? We're going to get to a little information on that here pretty soon. Um, but before we do, I just wanted to bring up his Facebook page here, uh, or the Find Lars Matank Facebook page. Once again, in German, um, but if you have any information about Lars, please help this woman out, help her find her son and solve this mystery. Uh, we're, we're all hoping, obviously, that he's still alive. Um, I don't know if he'd be living in the woods that long or if for some reason he's afraid of coming home. Um, he seemed to have some issue with authorities from what we just read. You know, a man in uniform comes in and it freaks him out and he leaves he literally, literally runs out without all his stuff. Um, I'm not sure if he thought he was going to be arrested for something he did or maybe he something he had on him or in his bags. Uh, I'm really not sure. There are so many questions around this case and quite honestly there's not a lot of information for us to review to find answers. They do have an uh, English version of the um, missing persons form here, so I just wanted to bring that up real quick. Missing, Lars Matank, age 28. Lars was last seen at Varna Airport in Bulgaria on the 8th of July 2014. He probably is injured and disoriented. In case you have any information in regards to this whereabouts or if you've seen Lars, please contact either of the following and then they have the uh, investigative agency phone number, the German police phone number and they even have an email address that you can send info to. So really I was wondering is it possible for some type of psychosis could, to be induced and this was talked about on the Reddit thread as well which I'm highly suggesting you take a look at if you're watching this video. Um, that's definitely a good starting point for a lot of theories to kick around. And for me, it boils down to a few. I mean, you're either looking at someone that maybe Lars was doing something illegal there. Maybe he had some type of drug on him or with him um, and was afraid of being busted or arrested or even just found out or something to that effect. Although, with how long he's been missing, that answer doesn't really hold up great for me because I figure at some point he could have been free and clear, gotten rid of the drug or something, and then tried to get himself home. Um, but obviously without his resources, I mean, he doesn't have a cell phone, he doesn't have his bag, um, I'm sure that would be a bit of a challenge. Uh, outside of that, you're looking at maybe he was slipped something, maybe it wasn't an intentional drug that he had taken, maybe there was some type of party drug or situation going on, and that might have caused some type of psychosis to start. Um, third is the injury, and this definitely the, the small amount of facts that we have in this case do lead to this conclusion, and I found an article here at brainandspinalcord.org um, specifically talking about head trauma, so let's check this out. Head injury and traumatic brain injury, TBI, are both fairly common conditions that can result in a variety of problems and symptoms such as dementia and psychosis. 
to a psychiatrist, these, imp these mental impairments are known as neurobehavioral deficits and include impairment in emotions, memory, cognition, and accompanying behavior. Psychosis is a generic term that lumps together many more specific symptoms and is never meant to be a self-contained diagnosis. Psychosis always occurs for a particular reason, such as TBI, and includes the more detailed symptoms of hallucinations, delusions, paranoia, personality changes, disorganized thinking, difficulty in social interactions, lack of awareness that behavior is unusual. And I believe if you go through that checklist that just from what we can see in the video of him running away, uh, knowing about the phone calls to his mother that didn't seem to make a lot of sense, um, I would say that he definitely lights up the paranoia aspect, um, possibly delusions, unless he's dealing with something that is legit. It's possible that some law enforcement officer gave him a good scare, if potentially if he was doing something wrong. Um, maybe he evaded them somehow and he's worried about being captured again. But assuming not, um, we could also include delusions here. Personality changes, um, disorganized thinking, you know, a lot of this stuff seems to click in to this story and seems to make some sense. Now what I'm not sure about is how long that type of psychosis would last um, with the injury. I mean, this is a case that is now coming up on a year and a half old. Would he really be stuck um, fighting these forms of psychosis on his own in Bulgaria, or would they have eventually faded and given him some opportunity to um, try to get home? Potentially, did something happen to him? Is he not able to get home? Did he succumb to elements in the woods? Uh, something worse? There's just so many different ways that this story can go, and like I keep saying, there's not a whole lot of information to really help us. So that's where we turn it over to you. And quite honestly, that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to do this story, because it's relatively recent. You have a mother that is desperately trying to find her son. You have a young man that is early on in his life. He's a good looking guy, seems to have some things going for him. And for some reason, something has happened that has terrified him to the point of these kind of bizarre and strange behaviors. Um, and hopefully, they haven't led him to some type of uh, early demise. I, I truly hope uh, in my heart that this guy is still out there somewhere waiting to be found, potentially needing some type of medical attention. So that's why we're covering it here. Um, to all of my friends in Germany, please take a look into this case for me. Please be sure to add more details to the story down below so we can all review them together and maybe get a better sense of what happened to Lars and to his family. Uh, I think I can speak for most of my viewers in saying our heart goes out to you and we hope that you do find Lars and that he is healthy and able to return to the life that he unfortunately uh, has disappeared from. Thank you all for sticking around with me for this edition of Brain Scratch. I really appreciate your constant support and look forward to reading your comments on this case. Hope you have a great weekend and we will catch you next week on the Geek and Dorks channel. Take care.